hollow tree in which to build a city has been selected by a swarm of wild bees. The old queen and her followers arrive at their new home. And immediately, a mass of workers cling to the interior and mysteriously the construction of their city is begun. It will consist of wax, which is produced from glands in their bodies and which they build into irregular columns. Each column is composed of thousands of perfectly formed cells that are used either for the storage of pollen and honey or as cradles for the young. The queen is the mother of the city. She is constantly surrounded by her nurses, sterile females who are called workers. There is also the male or drone. The drones are larger than the workers and they live a life of ease. When the city is completed, the workers gather nectar and pollen. Nectar is a sweet substance secreted by various flowers which attracts the bees. In gathering the nectar, the bees carry pollen from one flower to another, fertilizing them. The pollen is carried in little baskets and is seen as white objects on the bee's hind legs. The nectar is transformed into honey in the bee's stomach and is placed in waxen vats for future use. When all the cells are filled, the bees stand over them, causing the excess moisture to evaporate by raising the temperature within the cells. The cells are then thoroughly sealed with wax. And here the honey is kept in storage until the following winter, when it is mixed with pollen and is used as food for the adults and larvae. At the gates of the city, a robber bee attempts to pass the guards who are constantly on watch for these marauders. Cautiously, the robber moves forward and quickly slips by, but is met by a reserve guard within the city. A terrific struggle ensues, each trying to pierce the other with her stinger. Nearly always, these robber bees are caught and are either killed or put to flight. One of the most remarkable of all beings, either insect or higher animal, is the queen bee, who is about to lay eggs to populate her city. She dips her head into an empty cell and, finding it in use, passes to another, which she discovers is a drone cell. But not wishing to create a drone, she selects a third. After carefully inspecting this one, she mechanically backs her abdomen into it and lays but one of her three million eggs. Bees talk with her antennae, or feeler, and the queen's delay is apparently causing a discussion as to whether she should be replaced. A young queen lays approximately 3,000 eggs a day, but this one is old and will soon be dethroned, for her usefulness ceases with her inability to properly maintain the population of the city, the size of which is determined by the available food supply. The eggs are deposited in two kinds of cells, worker and drone, the drone cells being the larger. In a few days, an egg hatches into a worm-like creature. It is fed a mixture by the nurse bees consisting of honey and pollen. After several weeks, the cell is capped with wax. And within this cradle, a marvelous transformation takes place. First, a worm-like creature is formed, then differentiates into a ghost-like object. And now a seemingly lifeless thing. Then a form with eyes and legs. And lastly, the semblance of a bee, which will soon be vitally active. Finally, the young bee gnaws away the wax that entombs her in her cradle. With all her strength, she thrusts her head into the world and apparently from the effort she is expending is anxious to start living her preordained life. Think of this simple being anxiously coming into the world. She will soon gather nectar, transform it into honey, create wax to build the city, feed the young, care for the queen, living her life in spinsterhood, then killing herself with overwork. The old queen has now reached the stage where she has exhausted her egg supply and the workers select several young larvae to nourish into new queens. The cells are drawn out and the potential queens are fed a special food known as royal jelly, which the worker bees manufacture in glands contained within their head. 
A few days later, the cells are capped and the unborn queens suspended upside down in their cradles. Now the magic royal jelly begins its performance of transforming into queens, those who ordinarily would have been sterile workers. Her day has come, and the old queen sadly inspects the cells, which she would tear to pieces were they not so closely guarded. Suddenly she is surrounded by a mass of workers, and in this love ball is killed by suffocation. A new queen is born, and leaving the city flies high into the sky on her nuptial flight. Becoming aware of her exit, the drones awaken from their lazy existence, stretch their wings and follow her. The wedding is consummated high in the heaven. The drone, falling dead to the earth, a victim of his own specialization. In the meantime, the worker bees have surrounded the remaining queen cells and await the successful return of the newly wedded queen. In the event she does not come back, they will allow another queen to be born. Soon their vigilance is rewarded, for the new queen has returned. As it is a law in the city of wax that only one queen shall reign at a time, the workers accordingly start tearing the cells apart. First, they remove the wax covering. Then gradually the young unborn queens are withdrawn. The workers going over their bodies, reconsuming all of the precious royal jelly that has not been used. They are then allowed to fall to their death. While the workers have been busily engaged in destroying the queen cells, all of the drones have been loafing and gorging themselves with the stored honey, which is needed for the approaching winter. The drones are no longer necessary for the economic security of the city, but not knowing this, continue their carefree existence. This does not last for long. They are attacked by the workers and brutally thrown to the bottom of the city. It appears that those who have worked so long and faithfully for them, who have fed and reared them, now seem to take delight in destroying them, tearing off a leg, pulling off a wing, crippling and wounding them until all life has left their bodies. Finally, they are seized and roughly tossed to the burial ground. Thus, individual sacrifice is essential for the security of the whole group. And trees like this will continue to house these cities of wax long after man has ceased to exist.